Hello friends, in this session I will be discussing the concepts of ER diagrams. I will be discussing some extended concepts. So in this session I will be uh, specifically covering the concept of specialization. So let's see what specialization may, means. It is closely linked to generalization and aggregation. So I will be, uh, after this I will be covering those concepts as well. So let's start with specialization first. What is specialization? So the definition is that an entity set may include subgroupings of entities that are distinct in some way from other entities in the set okay so uh, what it actually means that you may have an entity set right which have some members which are distinct from each other and on the basis of that we can actually form their subgroupings fine for example a subset of entities within an entity set may have attributes that are not shared. Now, this is uh, the condition when such thing can occur. So, it may happen that some of the entity set have uh, some of the entity sets have an at have attributes which are not shared by other entity sets. For example, let's uh, move on to the example. We have the example of entity set person. So, a person may be classified as an employee or a student. Now. We uh, all of we all of us know that employee and student have some distinct characteristics. For example, a student may have a salary. Uh, sorry, an employee may have a, a salary, but a student may not have a salary. A student may have a unique roll number, right? So, and we can say that there are a certain set of total credits which are associated with the student, but it is not the case in case of an employee. So, that is an example of that case. Then, in such a case, what we can do is we can, we can basically uh, form two subgroupings of this entity set person and the subgroupings will be employee and student. So, that is the basic notion of specialization. Now, let's move into the details slowly. So, the process of designating subgroupings within an entity set is called specialization and if I define it formally what will it be it is the process of taking subsets of a higher level entity set for example in this discussion the higher level entity set is person so subsets of a higher level entity set to form lower level entity sets so which are the new entity sets which are the lower level entity entity sets that we formed over here they are the employee and the student so, we can also define it as the process of divine, defining subclass based on the basis of some distinguished characteristics. What were those uh, distinguished characteristics? They were salary and total credits of the entities of the superclass. Fine. Of the entities of the superclass. For example, an account entity set can have subclasses as current account and saving account. So, an account can be classified as a current account and a saving account, but the attributes of both the accounts may differ, right? So, how can they differ? Let's see it with the help of a diagram. So, we can also classify in the similar manner, we can also classify uh, an employee further as teaching staff or non-teaching staff. So, if I just see its diagram, it may be represented like this. Now, this is the person which is a high level entity set, right, which has been subgrouped as employee and the student. And this employee ha again is basically a higher level entity set with respect to these lower level entity sets, which are teaching staff and non-teaching staff. So, an employee can be categorized as a teaching staff employee or a non-teaching staff em employee. And a teaching staff basically any professor or something has a rank, right? He has a particular designation. He might be a professor, an assistant professor or a professor or an associate professor. But a non-teaching staff can be categorized or can be uh, distinctly identified as a, having a salary on the basis of hours per week he works, whereas the teaching staff will be having a fixed salary, right? So, um, this was an example again of specialization and so in some of the books it is represented like this in uh, 
in court basically this convention is followed but otherwise whenever we hear the concept of specialization or generalization they always say that you represent it with the help of an inverted triangle so in gate you might get this question maybe just as a one mark or something or you might just get this question and say what is this basically depicting which concept it is depicting so or what are the high level and the lower level entity sets in this so in this case again if i say the count has the attributes as now these are the generalized attributes which are there in this high level entity set they are account number in balance then it is split into current account and saving account now saving account has interest rate and overdraft amount as their attributes account is a so it is an inverted triangle over here okay it is an inverted triangle and so what it is basically representing is that this high level entity set is basically a type of saving account or a current account that means this is a high level entity set these are the lower level subsets of it okay so uh, now you can clearly see how these are distinguishing each other because this has an interest rate whereas this has an overdraft amount so that's all of this session that's all for this session of specialization in the next session i'll be covering the concept of generalization and we'll be uh, slowly moving on to aggregation and we'll also see what are the differences between both between both generalization and specialization so stay tuned for more more good work coming up thank you keep following the channel thank you friends